Hello, Credit Elevens. I hope you guys are working perfectly with your mathematics. Today, we're doing a very simple chapter which is called trigonometry, and it carries a lot of marks, and it's just giveaway marks. We're just going to look at the, the revision for your grade 10, and then we move on to, to our work for grade 11. So, we, we're going to start with the trigonometric identities, right? So, First of all, I need you guys to, to discuss what an identity is um, and an equation and an expression. And then maybe give examples, okay? So I'm just going to give you two minutes to just discuss among it yourselves um, the, what is an identity, what is an equation, what is an expression. So take two minutes, just um, re-look at those um, um, key concepts and then we, we continue. Okay, let's go. Right, well done guys. Now you will see all these words will all these three will just be popping up in, in the next problems that we're gonna be doing and I'll be explaining what is happening with those um, words. Okay, now let's continue with our lesson. Going back to the trick identities, all right? And then looking at the definition of your ratios, um, triangles, okay. Now in grade 10, what you did is you spoke about um, an adjacent, an opposite, and the hypotenuse in a right angle triangle, all right? And then we said the hypotenuse is the one that is facing the right angle, the 90 degrees. And the opposite is always opposite the angle that we're talking about, okay? And then the adjacent is sitting with the angle. It is adjacent to the angle. If we where to change this now and put the angle maybe there at the top, right? Now, the one that is opposite the angle is this side when you're given a triangle. And then the one that's adjacent will be that side if it's given a name, maybe A, B, C. And then this will be your hypotenuse. So whichever way your triangle is set up, Please make sure that you go and look at the angle 
right? Where is it situated? And then also look at the 90 degrees. The one that is opposite the 90 degrees is your hypotenuse. And the one that is sitting adjacent to the angle that is your adjacent, and the one that is the side that is looking, it's, um, it's opposite, direct opposite to the angle, that's your, your opposite. And now, remember, and then um, some of you, you've spoken about uh, soccer too, um, and then others are saying signs of happiness comes after having tons of alcohol and so forth. So whichever one that you, you use, um, to to remember your to remind yourself about identities. It's it's perfect. We we're gonna go with uh, soccer two. Right now, remember in grade ten we look at S C, and then T. So S is O over H. So sine theta it's opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case going to be y over r and then your cos theta it's adjacent which is x over hypotenuse that's your r equals to tan it's your opposite over hypotenuse that's y over x just to recap on what we we did in grade 10 so now if you look at your your cartesian plane right so you've got the x axis and then the y axis say you have point p there and that point P is made up of X and Y, right? So this is your X and Y. Let's extend your theta is here. Okay, so this is your X and that is your Y, which this is your hypotenuse and that is your opposite. And then this is your adjacent, okay? So now sine theta is opposite of a hypotenuse which is r y over r and then cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse which is your x over r and then your tan theta is y over x which is your opposite over adjacent okay right now use the diagram below to evaluate the following expression okay so a you've got sine theta over cos theta. As we were trying to remind ourselves of the, uh, that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cos is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. So please use this diagram to evaluate what sine theta over cos theta is. I'm giving you two minutes to work with your friend, and then we get this expression ourselves. Let's go.
All right, grade 11s, let's just now work together using this diagram to evaluate the expression sine theta over cos theta. You use your diagram here, okay? So if you draw a perpendicular and this is your theta now, going back to what we said, the one that's looking to the right, to the 90 degrees, that's your hypotenuse, okay? And then the one that's opposite the angle, that is your opposite. And then we have an adjacent here, which is your x, then this is your y, and then that's your, your r. Now, if I am doing this, this is sine theta over cos theta, and then you can, you can see that um, I've got only an equal sign, there's nothing on the left-hand side, and then I continue working. Sine is opposite over uh, hypotenuse. So opposite, which is y, over r, divide by cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that is x over r. Now, what we just did here, and just clarifying what is happening, I've got an equals two, but one, I'm working on the right-hand side only. So this is your expression. Remember this, guys. Okay, so now, as we continue, We've got y over r simplified this to multiply by r over x. And then your r and r divides, you now have your y over x. And then now, y over x, let's just write it in full. This is opposite over adjacent. Now, going back, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent over um, hypotenuse, and then tan is opposite over adjacent. And we are getting this opposite over adjacent, which gives us tan of an angle, which is theta. So in other words, your sine theta over cos theta is tan theta. Now, if you look the way I am writing this, sine theta over cos theta equals to tan theta, my left-hand side, it's y over x. The right-hand side, it is y over x. So this is called an identity. Okay. Right, now, let's move on. From that previous example that you guys just did, the trick identity, which is sine theta over cos theta, we've got a name for that. It is quotient, quotient identity, okay? English is not my mother tongue. Sine theta over cos theta is tan theta, that is your uh, quotient identity. So in other words, when you're talking about the identity, that it is the same, the left-hand side is the same as the right-hand side. So whenever I see tan theta, when I'm working with problems, maybe, uh, exam type questions, I can use, uh, I can quickly say, okay, tan theta, change it straight to sine theta over cos theta because that gives us the same thing. Or when I see sine theta over cos theta, I will get uh, tan theta. Now, moving on, use the diagram below to evaluate the expression like we did, okay? You've got your sine squared theta plus cos squared theta because you know how to do this thing now. I'm just gonna give you one minute to discuss with your friend and then we go straight to it, um, what this expression is. Okay, let's go one minute only.
Right, guys, let's just check quickly. Um, this is your y, and then that's your x. Now, again, this is an expression. You see the way I'm writing it? I'm just dealing with one side. Sine squared, so sine is y over r. So this is y over r, but that is squared. Plus, your cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is your x over r, and then that is squared, okay? Which gives us y squared over r squared plus x squared over r squared. Okay, guys, now remember, this is a fraction. You've got a denominator. So in this case, it's a coincidence that we've got um, uh, the same denominator, which is your uh, LCD. Then we take out the LCD, which is your r squared, r squared into r squared. That's 1 times y squared. You get y squared plus r squared into r squared. That's 1 times x squared. You've got x squared. Now, because we are working with a right angle triangle, right? Remember Pythagoras theorem? x squared plus y squared equals 2 r squared. So you say here, but x squared plus y squared equals to r squared, and then you recognize the source, it's Pythagoras theorem, okay? So in other words, where I see x squared plus y squared can substitute by r squared. So this is r squared over r squared, and that gives us a 1, all right? So you've got sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals to 1. Now if you write that, so sine squared plus cos squared equals to 1, that is n identity, and we call this identity Pythagorean identity because it works the same as your Pythagoras theorem. And so in other words, where you see sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, you can easily substitute by 1. We're going to take a break, and then from there we continue with this nice topic, which is trigonometry, the easiest of them all. Let's go get some water, then we come back, we continue with our lesson.